Hello friends and welcome to the Russian and the Freak show episode number 27 and what is the Russian and the Freak show all about is all about how to maintain the, your equilibrium and the function and the dysfunctional world as a freak family which is us in a business and in life so that you can transform chaotic complexity into your own personal normalcy how to win in who, business who family are you life to? and relationship who are you talking to i see you walking Real around the house world. all the time talking into, into the air into the phone you send what was up with that message you were saying the other day you were talking to someone leaving a voice message was like <laughs> 17 and a half freaking minutes what was up with that <laughs> that was marco polo who? do you do you guys do you, do you guys know Marco Polo app? You're leaving a 70 minute. Who the hell is Marco Polo? Who is <laughs> It's not a guy. <laughs> I'm leaving messages to a guy. No, it's an app that you can leave messages. Uh, it's 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 a video of you talking to. You can talk to your friend. I mean, that's how we communicate with uh, some of my friends. So Do that's what mine. we did. Mine too. Yes. Okay. So we're trying to look. So this is other. episode twenty-seven. We're trying to get the multiple screens up so we could actually see comments on the Instagram. So it's usually the, the cameras way over there. There's literally four cameras here and different screens around. So we want to be able to see the comments and interact. Is that mine? Yes, this is yours. So we can actually see your comments here and we can respond to you immediately. So post comments, post questions as we go uh, along with today's session. So we got tons of things to get through today, tons of notes for the, for the show. This is episode number 27. This is a Russian and the Freak. This is about how to win in business and in life. And as we say in the Alliance, which is the, the group coaching program for partners, for business partners, for married couples, for spouses, for coworkers, whatever it is, is we're here to co-create, co-elevate, co-operate, and co-dominate. That's what this is all about. In real world situations, real relationships this is the shit that you need to hear maybe not shit you want to hear but this is no bullshit straightforward telling it like it is the things you need to hear and of course bring the freaking fire every second of every second as we're going into this new year so we're just gonna be a, a few part series that we're gonna do here over the next few weeks and today we're gonna be on really just reflecting on the previous year this is stuff we've already done our new year is really December 1st. That's the way we do it in the in the free family. So we can get a head start. We don't want January 1st to be our new year. We want to get a head start in the game. Let everyone else start then. We already started our new year. So we did all this stuff early December to prepare and start our new year then. So it's not when you're all chaotic and, and holidays and whatever other crap is going on. So we started with a year, or we call it our yearly debrief. It's a it's an AAR meeting, an after action review, where we're doing a review, a reflection, and revisiting the entire year of 2022 so that we can have a follow-up meeting on that and set the intention, set the goals for 2023. And that's what we did. So we're gonna take you through the first part of that, kind of how it worked out, how we did this as a family, and, and we'll take you step by step through it. But I have a question for you. Did you guys have a meeting about 2022 reflection what you have accomplished this year you have not and we're going to be going through these questions with you have you had a meeting with your family to go over your goals for 2023 because as we realize even with coaching clients a lot of times what people don't take the time to do that unless they've been coaching with us for a while then they get the system how we do it then they kind of transform into their own system and put things that they want to edit as their own family unit, their own core values that they represent and things that they just are, are valuable for them and whatever they want to implement next year. But yes, please Did you get put... this on indianajones.com or something? 
I'm expecting a whip to get cracked out or something. Nice, some old guy. school revolver or something. Holy crap. Watch that out. is some hat. With that is some hat. <laughs> with this guy, you never know what kind of question comes around the corner and what kind of joke. Because he... He, what happens in his head, actually? Like, this must be joke after joke. What else do you have for us? <laughs> Let's keep on rolling. I know I'm sure it's So first off, what we do as a family, we have this created template for the preview or the review of the previous year and then the preview of the upcoming year. And it finishes off with setting themes and goal setting. We'll get into that in, in the upcoming weeks here. But this, and this is what we walk our one-on-one -on -one coaching clients through. This is what we work with the couples in the Alliance program through. And it starts off with a, a 20 point self-reflection drill where we go through 20 different points and they're very detailed, specific points. We're not gonna, we don't have the time to go through all those today, but if you want that 20 point self-reflection drill, just set, put a comment in there below or just send me a DM and we will email you out the full list, the 20 point self-reflection where you score yourself on a scale of one to five in 20 different categories, specific categories that are, you're thinking about them in a specific way. And it changes the game when you start thinking of it in the right way. So if you want that self-reflection, just put a comment down below or just send a, a private message and I'll send you out that full list. But So that's what we start off first. And we do this with the whole family, including three kids, 11-year-old and 8-year-old. And they do all the same stuff we do. They, do work, they filled out all this stuff and we met together and then we talked about it, compared answers, helped each other out, walked some through some stuff, explained some stuff, changed some stuff, modified some things. But why we really did this this year? Because last year, I don't remember us, we, we, you and me sit down, but not as much as, I think with the, this year was like that significant year for them that they, they did. sat they down. They were there for part of it. Because we pulled them out of school, we decided that we're gonna be do, do, doing home life thing. Not homeschooling, because we don't wanna recreate, recreate, uh, okay, we, we're gonna send it to you. Okay, great. So um, we, we didn't wanna recreate the school system. We wanted to create something different. And that's why they were part of this meeting this year. And it was incredible because they will have, we wanted to know their goals. We wanted to know what they were working towards, what they will work towards and what they accomplished last year. It's just totally different feature, but I will take care of this. So we, we started with, let's write down, I can do it now. So we, we started with, the, the previous year, obviously. And we, we sent this out, the kids showed up with it, we all did it together as part of the Alliance. That's what the Alliance is. The Alliance is you and anyone you need to make an Alliance with in life, in business and in life, personally, professionally, is an Alliance. That's what the, the group coaching program that's launched is all about, is having an Alliance. So it's an Alliance, not only with us as, as a family and business partners, but also with the kids. That's a full line. That's a jam-packed alliance. And I can't think of anyone better for you to have an alliance with than your people, but then also have an alliance with your coaches, an alliance with a like-minded community. So it started off with an action section. And it we'll go, we're gonna go through some of them. We're not we don't we don't have the, the time to go through every single one. Again, this is like weeks of coaching that we do, several week program that we set up the year with with coaching clients. But we're gonna go through the main some of the main points of it and Again, if you want, send the information. I'll, I'll add that into the, the email also, the full kind of list. So first was an action section. And it really just starts off with, what actions did you take in 2022? What actions did you take? What did you accomplish? What did you achieve? What did you create? What goals did you actually hit and, and finish and complete? And then on top of that action, in, in that same action section is, did you do the shit you said you were gonna do? You go back and people start set goals for the year and they you you ask them six months into it, what were your goals for the year? They don't even fucking remember them. So what was the point of setting them if you're not remembering them? If you're not checking in with those things every day, I think say get obsessed over them completely, but check in with them and connect with them on a daily basis, every morning and every night, what the hell is the point of doing them? Then you know you're not gonna be putting the steps into place to achieve them. So the first thing is really reflecting back on the year. What did you actually get done? What did you accomplish, achieve? What did you actually create? What did you build? What did you grow? And we're talking personally and professionally, not just in work, not just in business, personally and professionally. What goals did you actually hit? What goals did you say you're gonna do last year and you actually hit in 2022? And then what other goals did you hit that maybe you didn't even think of in the beginning of the year? Because you're gonna think of other goals along the way that you're gonna hit in the year. So that was the first step of the action section is what 
actions did you actually freaking take? And the way how I do it, I don't know how Steve is doing, there's some questions, is I keep that file open for 2023 goals. I, I revisit them. And why? Because like Steve said, we plan, we have a long list what we wanted to achieve. And when we get long list what we want, what happens? It becomes overwhelming. We don't know what's, what's the priority, we, what we need to work on. So kind of revisiting, reorganizing even, thinking some of this stuff you might not even accomplish this year because your goal might change. But I believe that the, uh, the big goals should be established, the main goals, and then you have the smaller little goals along the way. But that should be considering the, your mindset, your body, your nutrition, your workouts, non-negotiable, and the business. And even for those, for those of you that work for someone else, I'm sure you have goals. I'm sure you want to become better. I'm sure you want to make more money. I'm sure you want to step up your game at, at your job, at your workplace, right? And if you are a business owner, if you are an entrepreneur, I'm sure that you want to scale your business. You want to become better, whatever you do. So either way, we want to become better version of ourselves, right? But how we can get there, by action and you hear this word all the time everywhere now because that's what you you see this on social media take action uh, set your goals become better this year but this so many of you will do the same thing over and over and over again and fail three four months down the road down the road so how we can change this this year do you have an answer how you can do things different this year than previous year you will have the answer if you're gonna do a reflection on the 2022. Why some actions fail, why you didn't accomplish certain things. A lot of times, guys, I will tell you, things happen because we want to achieve our goals so fast. We wanted to get the results so fast. Like think about weight loss, think about approaching any kind of goal that you set for yourself or, or, or gaining muscle, losing the fat. We, we look at the mirror every day, we go on a scale every day, and the scale not necessarily moves every day. The, the visual effects you don't see all the time, but then out of nowhere, a month later, six weeks later, bam, the scale changes, your body changes. It's that work that we put every single day and we call it discipline. We call it discipline. That's what it is. There is nothing else. So it what happens is in 2023 you need to understand one big thing that it takes time it's a process but as long as you get to discipline you're all gonna be great stop and with that said this is, comes to the end of <laughs> russian and the freak episode number 27 because only thing that was supposed to be get done in there was a simple question of what actions did you fail to take in 2022 that was really what that, I guess that was the longer, that was the Russian version of saying, what <laughs> actions did you fail to take in 2022? And so we talked about, yeah, what actions did you take? And then we said, what actions did you fail to take? What goals did you say you were gonna do that you didn't complete? Where did you not keep the fucking promise to yourself? And as we're going, we're gonna try and stay interactive here with the questions. There's a question down below asking, how many times a week do I lift and do cardio? And I train seven days a week. There's a lift at least three times a week, and it's always a, it's a, usually a total body sometimes, and it, it changes different, the parameters change all the time, but three days of total body strength training, one day is with machines, one day is free weights, and one day is body weight. I try to be well-rounded, get the best of both worlds with strength, endurance. Then there's a day of boxing, there's a day of jujitsu, I try to get the jujitsu when things aren't all fucked up. And then that leaves cardio. At the end of each of those three lifting days, I usually throw in a mile run, or a 10 minute run, or a three mile run, and then some time on the bike where I'm catching up on emails and additional cardio. And then there's Saturday and Thursday are actual cardio days. Tuesday's boxing day. Try to be well-rounded and get the best of both worlds. And then Sunday's hikes, other events, or steady state cardio machines and stuff like that. But it's a well-rounded routine. You need, I think you need to hit muscles at least three times a week in all different areas between the free weights, the, the machines, and the body weight to get the best and to be well-rounded. I want to be well-rounded. I want to be a box. I don't want to be a toothpick. I want to be well-rounded and athletic and be able to do a little bit of everything. But how you can get 
into the same uh, the same great shape as Steve is by joining our online program guys that we have set up for a long time right now you can get the same program as Steve has right there so send us a message if you are interested it's an online program we coach you for the sessions uh, they, there is exactly a breakdown like Steve said so if you are interested put the comments send him a message we can hook you up with a, an amazing online program and uh, four workouts but if you of course interested join the alliance because that's the next level so the next part of the action section and we're again we're going to only give you we're going to go to the main points but there are some other stuff and i'll send them all out too if you if you want the next part was what should i have cut out from this year what dead end projects or time wasting activities or maybe things i had the wrong focus on or things that just weren't working out maybe habits maybe bad habits maybe people what did i fail to and that's an action what action what did I fail to cut out this year? What did I fail to cut short? And it might've been a business. Maybe ending, stopping doing one thing and, and, and moving on to something else. That doesn't mean quitting. If you stop doing something strategically for a purpose because it's a stepping stone to the next thing or you have bigger, better things to spend your time on, that is not quitting, that is a strategy. There's a huge freaking difference between that. So what should you have cut out in 2022? What should you have gotten rid of, eliminated from your life in 2022 and then the next part of this action step is all right what did you what what new habits did you create in 2022 that you didn't previously have that now are up and running and are automatic and are part of your life and so you see each one of these has all right what did i do what did i fail to do in this area we talked about about taking actions and goals we talked about it on pretty much on habits and things you should have cut out and then from there the next part of, of the action section is who to connect with and that's important because a lot of times when we uh, have our goals and ideas for that year we don't we forget that the basic of all the laws and everything that's happened around us is the connection connection with people right who do you need to connect with who did you connect with in who 2022 did you, what yeah. big connections did you make because you see everything is two-sided it's what how did i do it how did i fail to do it so what connections did you make in 2022 like solid quality connection. It might have been a new business connection you made with a company or with a client or maybe connections with, with your family, your daughter, your grandmother, your parents or a friend. Like what deep connections did you make deeper? That's what we're saying here. Like what connections were actually made this year? Either new connections, deeper connections. What did you actually get done in the people department? And then the flip side of that is, all right, where did I fail? Where did I fuck up with relationships or connections? Who did I fail to connect with? What big company did I want to reach out to? What client did I want that I didn't have the, the balls to go after? Who didn't I ask for, for whatever I needed to, to, to ask for? So what connections did you fail at? Or the relationships that you have, where did you, what connections did you fail to do enough of in that connection? It's, it could be your spouse, it could be your kids, whatever it is. This, these are the things you need to be brutally fucking honest with yourself with, and then being able to share it with your team in your alliance, with your family, even with your kids. We went over all this stuff, our own personal answers to these with the kids. We had a family meeting on a four, we have a, a, a table, a four square table where we're each on one end of the table and sharing all this stuff with each other. And some of it, yeah, we're not perfect. Yeah, there's some vulnerability that has to get there and the kids have to see that. You have to humanize yourself to your team, to your family. Like this is the way you need to break shit down so you can build it back up even better and then build some momentum going in to the new year. So that, that was the next part of the action section was connection. So then right there, the next area is accountability. Yes, the accountability. What did you fail to take accountability for in 2022? Write it down, guys, in the comments below right now, because I know uh, the accountability word is a big word today. And if you don't have accountability, how can you improve in life? And everyone talks about accountability all the time into extreme ownership. They see Jocko's book, Extreme Ownership, and everyone talks about it and preaches it, puts cool quotes on it. And then I see it in the real fucking world with even high level individuals talking about accountability all the time. The second some shit goes down, it's pointing the motherfucking finger. I've seen it all the time. I've seen it with, with high level influencers happening all the time. Pointing so, the finger, complaining, blaming other people. Like, how about the first thing, when something goes wrong, the first thing you should be doing is be a race to who's gonna take the fucking blame for it. The first thing something goes right should be a race for who's gonna, that's when you should be pointing the finger at other motherfuckers. 
when something goes right, who helped you make that happen? Because you didn't do it yourself. Definitely didn't fucking do it yourself. Stop pointing the finger. Stop blaming. Take accountability for shit. So what? where did you fail to take accountability in 2022? Something that maybe went down, not the right, the right way, and you didn't take accountability for it. This is where you really get into the, the vulnerability and saying, shit, this happened. I did not take full accountability for it. Imagine sitting there in front of your kids and having to talk about something that you failed to take accountability for. Imagine the respect that they're going to have for that. Oh, shit, this is okay to be like that. If, if they're even their, their superhero has done these things. And then, but the thing is, first, bringing it to light, shining some light on it, admitting it. And then, all right, here's what I'm going to do about it. So then the flip side of that is, right, what did you take accountability for in 2022? And not just, that doesn't just mean, oh, I, I succeeded at this, hit this big goal, so I took accountability. No, no, no. Shit that got fucked up, we're talking about. Or maybe things that didn't go right or things that weren't perfect. That's what we're talking about. Where did, did you step up and say, my bad, that was me. I fucked this up. Let's figure out how, how we can fix this. So where did you fail to take accountability in, in 2022? And then the, the next part of the accountability section. What could I have done better in 2022? Oh, yeah, well, we can start, easier. we can start with this one. Easier. You want to a 30 minute speech on it? No, we can do, we can, we can start with a different question. Uh, lessons of 22. Lessons, what lessons? Do we That's have? what I have to say on it? All right, I'll, I'll ask the question. Lessons of 22. That's yes, it. what kind of lessons? And this is all account about accountability. So it's connected to the accountability. What lessons did you learn from not taking charge, not maybe being responsible in your actions. And and look guys, that's why we did that in December, at the beginning of December, because this stuff is not gonna happen. You're not gonna figure this out in an hour. Some of our clients take two or three weeks to accomplish this, because this is a deep stuff. This is not gonna happen just quick. It's gonna take time. You need to take the time to answer. You need to time, take actually the time. What's the best thing is that when you do the reflection weekly and monthly, this will help you go towards this yearly accountability because it's hard immediately to say, okay, this is what I did this year. This is the accountability. Unless something major happened in your life, then it's easier for us realize that that only major things are easy to remember those little victories those little fails we forget so that's why it's so important to do this on weekly monthly then you can go to yearly and uh, look at all of this and write this down and speaking of accountability we have johnny blanco 10 said i didn't hold myself accountable in my work search i should have been patient and waited for a job that suited me Think, right. I mean, it's Same true. Way. You should, and I'm going to give you a great book to read. To read on that, even just the that back end of the book, you can even just read just to head start. But yeah, you should wait till you find a job that suits you. But if you're just sitting, depending on how long you're sitting around, you should be able to. You should, even if you have to, do what you have to do until you make that happen. You can still find do a job search, but still do maybe something that's not a perfect fit for you in the meantime. Better than nothing. But then, if you want a good book to really see how to find the job that suits you, the best is. The six, genius, six geniuses. It's Patrick Lencioni, the six geniuses, or somebody, the six working geniuses. And it breaks down how to figure out your two top areas of work that you should look for, two categories, and then your middle two, and then the two you should avoid. So you might be in a job that in your bottom two categories and you're just miserable because it's not in your zone of genius. How to kind of find that zone of genius, the area you should be working in. Awesome book. It breaks it down as an entire framework. Type of book, I don't know exactly, it's something genius. Yeah, you can search, geniuses. but Patrick Lencioni has a lot of books in um, kind of uh, different fables talking about work uh, related stuff. It's really good and easy reader. I didn't read this one, so I cannot tell you about the it. Six Types of Working Genius, it's called Patrick Lencioni. The Six Types yeah. of Working Genius, A Better Way to Understand. Where, why is that title cut off? Better Way to Understand, whatever. Can you click on that? Overview? I did not show the whole thing. But anyway, it's six, six, six types of working genius. A better way to understand your gifts, your frustrations, and your team. 
awesome book to, to fits exactly what Johnny Blanco 10 is talking about finding waiting for the job that suits you well sometimes don't just don't don't wait too fucking long because do whatever you got to do in the meantime just to hold yourself over as a building block to get there and while you're doing it just keep honing the skills to get to where you want to be so yeah check that book out all right the next section of the review and reflection of 2022 is acceptance is the acceptance section we were in the action accountability and now acceptance all right so basically what do i need to accept that happened in 2022 like what is done what is gone what happened maybe it could be a win a loss whatever it is we're not going to hang on what am i not going to carry over into the next year what am i not going to lug around with me? what am i not going to still stress about it's done with it's over with get the fuck over it put on your big boy pants and march the fuck on that's the way you need to think about it letting go of the bullshit the drama the stress whatever held you back whatever people place your things held you back in 2022 and then think about that what what is it, it was or in the earlier section too what do you need to let go of it comes back to that question what do you need to let go of what do you need to what should you have let go of that you haven't that you need to let go of now for this upcoming year and on that acceptance section let, let's keep that rolling so there is is what do i need to accept in 2022 and let go of in 2022 to get a fresh start in 2023 yeah what was your biggest disappointment this year this goes into acceptance as well like that's that's another big big topic because we are so many times disappointed in the outcome right disappointing in people but then also it's connected to taking responsibility and if you uh, look at this from a different per, uh, perspective you're gonna have a better answer for 2023 and then on that same same note what burned you out? What did, what burned you out? What made you not be accountable? Made you lose your structure? Made you lose your patience? Made you feel tired and worn out? What really burned you out in the year, in, in 2022? And really that's, those are some of the main ones that we, we talk about. There are other ones. And again, I'll send them all out in an email before we go in and then in the previous uh, upcoming episodes, we'll do the next stage of this to kind of walk you through some of those, but you can't, really go to that next level until you break down. All right, here's what happened. Here's what I learned. We went over the lessons. We went over the accountability, went over some action stuff, some acceptance stuff, and you've got to accept all that before you can go on. If you just carry that over, it's going to drag all that negative energy into the new year. You need to release that negative energy, release that tension, release that bullshit and drama, whatever it is, that stress of failures and fuck ups in 2022. So you can set the right intention and the right focus and the right goals, which we'll do in the upcoming weeks here on the Russian and the Freak Show coming up. And guys, if you if you stay in here and you're watching this whole episode, obviously you're searching for some answers, you're looking to, to for a better life in 2023. So actually do do these exercises. Don't just stay here. Take notes, take a notepad, write it down. And you can even send us a message. You can DM us. We can hop even on a call. We can hop on a discovery call that will take you through the process of deep thinking, asking deeper questions, asking difficult questions, and even getting to another level because there is nothing better than that one-on-one discovery call that we do with clients. And that's when the sometimes the breakthrough comes immediately or they want to really continue these calls every single week. And that's what then also the Alliance is all about, about you needing some allies in business and in life, working on your mind, your body, and your business to completely dominate this upcoming year. So if you're struggling with work-life imbalance, I'm not even saying work-life balance, that's what it is. It's, there is no work-life balance. It's work-life imbalance. And you want to start finally living life on your own fucking terms and living the ideal, we call it the ultimate freak freedom lifestyle. That's what the transformation journey is. Going from work-life imbalance to living your ideal lifestyle with your own personal self-expression and personal freedom. That's what the Alliance is really all about. When it really comes down to it, that's what the transformation phase is. And, and we're, we're kicking off at the end of this month the Alliance Accelerator, a 90-day program that's gonna walk you through that process from that work-life imbalance to the work-life alignment, satisfaction, domination, fulfillment, and happiness on that journey to start living life on your own terms, the exact ideal lifestyle you've been looking to live. And that's gonna happen throughout a 90-day program 
coming up with the Alliance. So if you want some information on the Alliance, send a message below. The last chance to get in on the charter memberships before the price goes up by about 10 times the price that it is now. This is it's your going chance, up. guys. This right is your now. last chance here to make that happen. And so if you want to get in on the ground level of the Alliance, send a message there below as well, and I'll send you the email with all the information we're talking about, and also we'll jump on the phone to do that discovery call that the Russian was talking about to get you up and running. Yes, and a lot of people like wondering, why, 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 why do I need a community? Like think about it, the environment, the environment that you live in is so important, has direct impact on a lot of, of your achievements and how you think. If you are in an environment that somebody constantly question your actions, is negative, that has never negative mindset and you surround yourself with people like this, it's so difficult for you to see uh, above this, to see a different future, to see a different, to have a vision, to, to uh, go for your dreams. And but when you join a group of empowering individuals, of people that w are on the same mission as you to create a better life, to have a discipline, to have great energy and confidence and start taking action, th this is like a, a uh, an amazing wheel that starts spinning and you start being around these people and you start doing the same. There's nothing better because if the bad environment is holding you back, that means that the good environment will propel you for actions. Hell yeah, holy shit, you had me at what? hello. You had me at hello, holy Ooh. shit. And if you need, want the hat, Indiana Jones, RussianIndianaJones.com will get you a copy of that hat. Take us home, take us home. Jeez. I said to you, I told you that you never know what's coming around the corner with him. <laughs> That's what came. I think he's all fired up after us starting watching another, uh, one more time, the episodes of Walking Dead. If you guys are watching Walking Dead, don't tell me, don't spoil it, because we watched a few years ago, we watched it without the kids, and now the kids are watching with us, and they are addicted on this show. So whoever is watching the, the Walking Dead, Put comments down below if you're addicted to the show. So guys, anyway, please stay with us. Co uh, consistently watch us on Thursday. And please, don't suffer in silence. Don't be a loner. Don't think that you're gonna figure this out on your own. It took us 20 years to figure this out. We still figure it out, but we're plowing forward. And we wanted to help you. That's why we created the OTD the Alliance. When we have couples, men, women, entrepreneurs, that we can help you in your daily, weekly disciplines. So you can become better in your life. So you can create the life that you wanted to. So guys, again, when I was trying to join my life and answer your questions, I was not able to do so. It's not showing me even that I'm going live. So all the comments to Steve, please send him a message and we will take care of you in your mind, body and business. Have an awesome day and this awesome weekend. This has been the Russian and the Freak episode 27. You're fucking awesome. You're fucking awesome. You're awesome, fucking guys. awesome. Thank you so we'll much. We'll see you next time. No excuses. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed, think you're something out of my nightmares, standing right there. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, then will you get bored of killing me? Silhouettes of you are like a dawn, never really know just what you want. With you, I don't ever feel calm. I can feel the sweat inside my palms. Play with me like cats and a street.